about to wake up the whole project. Ah, oh, man, whatever. This is awkward. <laughs> so, what's up, bro? How you feeling? Oh, I'm living the dream. What? Sis, I'm living the dream. That's what I'm talking about. <sighs> Money. Hard work is always rewarded, right? Yep, just like our parents. 32 years and they both still at the post office. <laughs> mom selling stamps, pops delivering the mail. Never complain, never missed a day. Yeah, well, mom did when she had us. <laughs> yeah. Nice. But Pop said she went back to work a lot sooner than she had to. Right, of course she did. Brought us up right here in Harlem, USA, in the projects. But you know what? We do what we do. <laughs> when I make it to the league, we'll have enough money to retire both of them. But we're out of here, make it. Sit back, chill, the rest of the natural born lives. <laughs> If we can move them out of here, because you know they're going to uh, be kicking and screaming. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Uh, CC. <laughs> this guy. Yo! I still got the skills, though. <laughs> Too bad you got kicked off the squad. Oh, that's because Coach is a hater. You only wanted one player to shine, but it's all good, though. My man Freak is extra nice with it. We both go into the league. Oh. Oh, you heard me, little sis. Ugh. It's a crack of dawn. You already changed your breath? Nah, see, that's my new mouthwash. Hmm, distilled. Oh, you got jokes <laughs> early in the AM. Why you two yeah. always beefing? Yo, Vic, you are no good on the curb bum. Let's just keep it 100. Two uh, times 50. Wow. Wow. You see how she doing mathematics on me, though? Hey. It's just a tax on my character. As you already know, I'm an upright citizen with high morals and values. Any fool. It's time for us to get to school and we can't be late. Vic, you joining us? Nah, I'm gonna catch y'all at the cafeteria for lunch. Son, that's at 12 noon. Yeah, oh, and yeah. I'm gonna take a little nap, you know, so I'm well rested <laughs> for them afternoon classes. Vic, Vic, you a trip, man. Hey, nah, son, hey, you want your boy in class nodding off, head on a desk? Or you want me bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, raising my hand and answering mad questions in class? Why didn't you just go to bed? Uh, because right. I can't sleep at night. <laughs> Freak, you believe this? No. Yo, it's the truth. I sleep better in the daytime. My doctor said that my biological clock is all turned around. <laughs> you know, like, up is down, down is up, left is right, right is left. Wait, how do I... <laughs> you know what? It's all good in the hood. You two know I'm dyslexic. It's dyslexic. Yo, you what? twisted for show. Whatever. You know what's for lunch? Ah, Monday's mystery meat. Hate it. You know what? If you use your imagination, it tastes just like your mom's prime rib. Tasty. Tasty. I'm saying, though. <laughs> All right, y'all. I bid you adieu. Adieu. Be safe, fam. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Give me some. Hi. Wow. <laughs> Oh, CC, you ain't right. Every but that's all right. And why is that? Because you keep forgetting. I'm an FOF. And do tell, what is an FOF? <laughs> you didn't tell her? Yo, my dearest dear. A friend, a freak. <laughs> FOF? Yeah, that's hot, right? Nah, that's corny. Nah, you mad because you ain't come up with it. Let me oh, go get the bag. Please. All right, hurry up. <laughs> hey, yo, freak, I'm going to see you later, man. Yeah, hey, Vic. Uh, what, what? Get to school, man. No more missed days. You know me. I'm gonna be there. Man. That's exactly it, Vic. I know you, B. Get to school, man. Whatever. The slip, Dick. Hey, sis, hold up. Like the sun that shines over the great state of California, we have been a banner of excellence in college basketball. Our ideologies are rooted in the core of what comprises the DNA of who we are at UCLA. 11 times champions. You are destined for greatness. And your destiny should lead you to a grand stage. And trust me, no stage is more visible than the city of Los Angeles and UCLA. We will have your jersey hanging in your locker, waiting for you to claim your spot amongst the stars. What are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? Like I said, what are you doing? Anyways, where is Freak? Now, CC, you know your brother. He loves to make a grand entrance. He gets it from your mother. She's always showing him late for work. I arrive when my services are needed and not before. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, I'm just explaining where he gets it from. Mm -hmm. Was I missed? Boy, where were you? I was taking out the trash, Mama. You're such a good son. I'm going to miss you when you go off to college. Yeah, who's going to do the trash detail? Mm -hmm. Oh, don't worry about that, Pop. Cece could take over. Uh-uh, not so fast. I'm going wherever you're going. Someone has to keep you on track, and them college chicks are. That's right, Cece. You help tutor them. I'll take care of the young ladies. <laughs> Vic, go home. Why are you even here? Yo, because I'm the cameraman. You know what? Speaking of which, Freak, you ready? Hey, these young college hotties are already hitting me up, man. Oh, just tell me in the world which university. Vic, in due time. Relax, brother. Yeah, Vic, shut up. 
Freak was born ready. Now make sure you don't cut off my head, because I got to look bad. All right, everyone, I'm ready. I'm ready. Vic, you rolling? Rolling. Uh, hi, everyone. I'd like to thank everyone from my coaches to my teammates. You guys taught me the importance of teamwork and working together. So thank you. I'd like to give a big shout out to my main man, Vic, holding the camera down. I ain't gonna ask where you got the camera, but thanks. <laughs> I'd like to thank my loving parents for sacrificing so much to provide for me and my sister. And I'd like to thank my twin, Cece, for being a great role model in my life. Uh, this has been an extremely tough decision. Each school was carefully considered, but I have finally decided to choose. I've always wanted to spend time in Cali and enjoy the beaches, because I'm tired of this New York snow. Good weather aside, UCLA. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, oh, God. God. It's my boy. Oh, yeah. It's what? my boy. You read my mind, freak. You read my mind. You know I love the pretty yeah. beaches out there, man. UCLA provides a great opportunity. First of all, Los Angeles, prepare. Because as a new <laughs> Bruin on the block, as yes. a new Bruin on the block, I plan to come in and contribute to the great legacy of winning there yes. and usher a new dynasty of winning there. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and see you on the West Coast. Yeah. UCLA, fight, fight, fight. UCLA, fight, 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 fight. Frequency vibrations. Well, you know that little dance he does? He came out doing that. Freaking and vibing? Oh, my goodness. Freaking and vibing. Yeah. He, uh, he was running from the time he was nine months old. I mean, really, the boy didn't crawl. <laughs> he skipped that and went right to running around and getting into everything. He actually became, I guess, like a neighborhood mascot, you know? People were really proud of him. They come to the games and, and watch him, and then I could see that he became everyone's hope. Hello? Hey, Ma, it's me. Hey, Frequency. Hi, I got you on speakerphone. Okay, your sister there? Hey, Mama, I'm right here. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm fine. You bet's here too, Mama. Hi, Mama. How you doing? I'm fine. Does she have to be here? Yes. Mr. Pagnati, the agent I was telling you about, he's in the room too. How you doing, ma'am? I'm good. Nice to meet you. What a pleasure to finally meet the queen mother of this young, talented man, even if only by telephone. That's sweet. Hang on, Frequency. Here comes your father. All right. Hey, sorry I'm late. Hope everyone's well. How you hey, doing, Daddy. Mr. Hey, Bob? I'm doing good. So let's get to it. Yeah, let's do this. We all know why we're here. This meeting is strictly confidential, 100% off the record. Didn't happen. We weren't even here. Capiche? Capiche means understand in Italian. Capiche? Capiche. Freak insisted that I have his entire family here. I think it's great that he has a good support system around him. I've been doing this a very long time. I work with some of the best. Now, let me rephrase that. I work with the best. And the best always seem to have a great support system around them. A family, if you will, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Let's cut to the chase. Leaving college early now and entering this year's NBA draft is the right move right now. And when you sign with me, Dom Pagnotti, as your agent, I will make sure you are well taken care of. I will make sure you are protected. With this freaking involvement, yeah. I love it. Freaking involvement. This freaking involvement thing you do when you get hot freak, we're gonna make you more money off the court than you will on. We already have endorsements and things like that in line, so. Cece, I said we because we're gonna do this together. We're a team. We're team freak. But freak, you need to be in the league first, right? That's why I'm here. No, yeah, I hear you, Mr. Pagnotti, but like I told you before, I already promised my parents four years of college. That's the plan, man. That's right. Plans, Plans change, change freak. freak. Listen, in life and in basketball, you need to adapt and change to the situation at hand. Now, even if you have the greatest coach and they draw up the greatest play and all the X's and O's make perfect sense on paper, you still need to react to what the defense shows you and then make your move. This is the right move. This is the right move now. And four years of college is a great plan for basically anybody. But you're not just anybody. You are the greatest collegiate talent I have ever seen. Shoot, dribble, pass, and defend the basketball my entire time on this great planet Earth. Now, Miss Martha, Mr. Pete, I have seen so many of the greats jump right from high school to the pros. Freak, you've at least experienced college. You know what that is. You've been there. You've done that. I am offering you now a chance at the experience of a lifetime. Do you know how many people would love to be in those Jordans right now? Yeah, Freak, I mean, what if you get hurt? You remember how you came down on your ankle in that game earlier this year? Oh, yeah, but I was nothing. Right, we know it was nothing, but next time it could be something. I saw that. Good game, but BAM!
just like that, and you could be flipping burgers. Well, maybe not flipping burgers. Maybe you're the manager or assistant manager at some burger joint. Maybe I do a favor and make a call, and you're a delivery boy at Sal's Famous Pizzeria. But the bottom line is you will be a long, long, long ways away from signing multi-million dollar contracts with me, mm. Don Pagnotti, as your mm. agent. So it's all about the money, right? When was it not all about the money? Money isn't everything. No, it isn't, sir, and no disrespect was meant. But freak, money is freedom. The freedom of choice, the freedom to live. Money is the difference between renting and owning, between being the waiter and being waited on. It's the difference between being the chauffeur or being chauffeured. Now, do you want to be a chauffeur? This here is a contract. This makes me your agent. Sign on the dotted line, and I will take you and your family to the promised land. Like I said, Mr. Pagnotti, it's not all about the money. Pete, let the man finish. He made his point. He's finished. Aren't you finished? I said my piece, but I know I'm right. You guys should talk. Pete, what if frequency does get hurt? Shouldn't he take this opportunity now? What if the boy goes pro, gets hurt, and then doesn't have a college degree? Look how hard we work for him to get to where he is. But college isn't for everybody. Pete, you didn't go. That's why we work so hard for him. I'm just saying, I mean, if he's ready to do this now as opposed to later, Pete, anything can happen. You're right. Anything could happen. This is his future. This You're is his life. You're not listening to me, Pete. Not just a game. All right, all right, all right. Mom, Pop. It's all right. Look, truth be told, I don't even know what I want to do right now. I understand that. Yeah, but I was talking to my boy Vic the other day. Why? And he, and he was making a lot of sense. He thinks I should leave early, too. You know what? what? I've, I, no, no, I've kept quiet this whole time, and I also think that Freak should join the league. I think it's a great business decision, and I think that Mr. Pagnotti is absolutely right. Thank you, Yvette. You're welcome. Now, Freak, I know for a fact that people have been talking about the company you keep, and you need to be careful. It could compromise what we're trying to do here. What are you trying to say? You know, your association with that guy Victor off the court, it could compromise your selection in a draft. As a matter of fact, I know it will. Do you realize the difference in dollars between being drafted first overall and 21st? You're talking tens of millions of dollars. You don't get it, do you? CC, our first sneaker deal alone, you're talking a difference of a 50 to 100 million dollar difference just by that. Number one, that's what we need. If I were not 1,000% convinced in my mind and in my heart that we could get you drafted first overall, I wouldn't be like this. This is the play. This is the move, freak. You've got to listen and to I, me. I, I absolutely hear you, but who are they to tell me who I can't hang with my brother? No, freak, you need to listen to him. I've been telling you the same exact thing. Mr. Dom, Frequency and Victor grew up together. They're best friends. We took the boy in and practically adopted him. Martha, I told you that boy ain't nothing but trouble. He, he's family. Okay, but that's my boy, and he agrees with y'all. It's not about agreeing with Vic. We're trying to prepare you for your future. You know, but it is his future. This so is none of your business. You still you still excuse me? Yeah. 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 You still have a decision to make. Sign with no, me, yes or your no. Business. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Can, I just, can I just, can I just interrupt for one sec? Everybody just settle down, please. Now, I appreciate you all taking the time in this heated discussion, but the truth of the matter is, there's only one person in the room that can make this decision. Now, son, you know how I feel. Right. Education is the most important thing in life, but this is your choice. It's not your mother's or your sister's or mine. Mm. It's not your girlfriend. It's not Mr. Pagnotti's, and it definitely ain't Victor's. This is your decision, son. So you tell us what you want to do. I need 30 seconds, freak. OK. I have four beautiful children, and I want each of them to go to college and graduate. But if you walked up to any one of those four children right now and said, I will give you a contract that's worth 100, 200, 300 million dollars, I would say, bypass college. You can always go back. I want you to graduate. I want you to get your doctorate. I want to call you Dr. Freak. But you need to understand this. Now, you can go all over this beautiful country that we live in and go into any of the major universities. You will find people that are 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 years old, and you will find them graduate. But if you live to be 500 years old, you will never see ever, ever somebody 40, 50, 60 years old being drafted from college into the NBA. We need to strike while the iron is hot. This is your life. We will get you drafted first overall. You will be up there with all the big names. I'm not talking first rounder. I'm talking first overall. Listen to me. This is what Mr. I Pagnotti, do. I am the best at what I you do. Have had Nobody your 30 is better. Seconds plus. Miss Martha, I am sorry. You Mr. just need Pagnotti, to understand. Would you please let my wife speak? I apologize. 
frequency. Baby, what do you want to do? Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna have Cece go through this contract, front to back. I'm gonna think about it, sleep on it, pray on it, and I will call you in the morning. All right. Listen, Mr. Pete, Miss Martha, it was a pleasure meeting the two of you over telephone, and I look forward to meeting you both in person. Remember, everybody, this meeting never took place. We weren't even here. Capiche? Capiche. Okay. All right, Mom, Pops, I'm gonna call you guys later. I love you. Love you, I right, love you too, son. Bye. We met working at the post office together. Martha was the clerk, and I was a carrier. And uh, I asked her out to lunch one time and take her for a bagel around the corner from where we worked. A bagel? A bagel, yeah. With cream cheese? Cream cheese. Split down the middle? Split down the middle. Love at first sight. Yeah? I believe that. It was true. It happened to me. Let's do this, young man. Yes, sir. <laughs> wow, that's a good show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Frequency Vibration. <laughs> welcome aboard, young man. Thank you, sir. Welcome aboard. Wow. Wow. This is bananas. Take your time, baby. Thanks, Ma. OK, so I first want to thank everyone who made this possible. Mom, Dad, I couldn't have done this without you. <laughs> I like to thank my lady, Yvette. My dude, Vic. Hey, yo, I got you, man. <laughs> hey, all of them in the building all day, man. All right. Yeah, I love you, man. I love yeah. you, Uptown. Uptown. Hey, he, he's like my brother. Oh, gosh. And also, I want to thank my sister, Cece, who is also my manager. <laughs> oh, Swish. Love you. I love you more. And my agent, Mr. Don Pagnotti himself. You're the man, baby. <laughs> I guess I will take some questions now. Yes, ma'am. How did you get the nickname Freak? A lot of people don't know this, but Freak is short for my very first nickname, Frequency Vibrations. <laughs> yeah, true story. I'd like to introduce our mother so she could tell it. Go ahead, you know, mama. Tell her, mama. Yeah, mama. Come on, mama. <laughs> okay, no, mama. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Frequency and Cece are fraternal twins. And so when I was pregnant, one of them kept kicking and jumping around all the time. So my husband, Pete, put headphones on my belly and played reggae music. Hence the name Frequency Vibrations. <laughs> we shortened it to Freak. How did you know who was kicking? A mother knows. A mother always knows. Are you ready for a photo op? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the next NBA superstar, Frequency Vibration. Yes. Go ahead, son. Thank you all for coming. We will be available for one-on-ones in the back. Good job. Well done. Congratulations, well done. sir. What a life, eh, freak? One minute you're playing 21 and horse on the courts in Harlem, and the next moment you're in the showroom, configuring the gunmetal and graphite exterior of your luxury car and your iPad mini. <laughs> oh, I bet you get a crazy crowd when you drive that car around the block in the old neighborhood, huh? Yeah, living the dream. <laughs> Mad pandemonium. But folks from back around the way are real proud of me. Yeah, I hear you. Local kid makes good. You know, it kind of reminds me of when I took my tech stock public and I rang the New York Stock Exchange bell and my mom's friends called her up and said, Maggie, is that your son on Bloomberg News this morning ringing the bell? And my mom says, yes, sir, Bob, it was him. That was a great moment, Freak. And you know, our lives are like a pearl necklace of great moments, all strung together with the finest silk thread of memories. And we have to be very careful how we cultivate those pearls and you thread that necklace. Does this meeting by any chance have to do with Vic Van Leer? I grew up in the burbs, freak. I wasn't poor, upper middle class, comfortable. My daddy worked as an accountant for one of the largest insurance firms in the country. Smart with his money. Mom didn't have to work. I went to boarding school. And my dad died of a heart attack when I was a freshman at MIT. I was a movie geek, wanted to be a civil engineer, but I made my fortune by becoming a hybrid of both those interests. My dad didn't want me to be an accountant. <laughs> oh, listen to this. My best friend was a guy named Isidore. 
yeah, we called him Izzy. He was one of the smartest human beings I have ever met in my life. I mean, Izzy was taking second year college calculus courses as a high school sophomore, right? Straight A student, full ride to MIT. Izzy had the world at his fingertips. But he was always looking for trouble, and trouble found him. He ran with the wrong crowd. And when we got to MIT, he got this great job working for a financial consulting firm in Boston. Mm. But every weekend, he would pew, fly to Vegas. <laughs> you see, Izzy had a system for counting cards in Vegas that had the big casinos on the strip. Oh, stymied. He would come back to MIT with suitcases filled with $200,000 in cold cash. What? Yeah. So your man Izzy was getting hit off like that? Like a fat rat in a cheddar cheese factory, freak. Okay, so what happened to this dude, Izzy, because he's dope. <laughs> no, not dope. Dead. After he'd been missing for three weeks, the Nevada State Police never found hide nor hair of Isidore. And our friendship took a hit when he asked me to hang out with him in Vegas, and I said I wouldn't do it because I knew he was on a dark and twisted path in his life. And yes, yes, he was my dude. But no way was I going to throw my life away trying to show my loyalty to a guy who really and truly didn't understand what loyalty was all about. So this meeting is about Vic. Correctamente. Okay, well, sir, Vic isn't Izzy. And why is that, freak? Well, for one thing, you and your dead friend Izzy didn't grow up poor. Me and Vic grew up in a neighborhood where we had to look over our shoulder every two seconds to make sure nobody was going to walk up on us and rob us. True. Izzy and I did not grow up in the hood. But we, like you, thankfully grew up in a two-parent household. But even that wasn't enough for Izzy. He wasn't satisfied. He was always looking for a five-alarm fire when he already had the warmth and comfort of a loving family. This is not about class warfare, freak. This is about the consequences of making bad choices and risking it all when you feel like you have nothing to lose. Vic is like a brother to me, sir. But you shouldn't be Brother Vic's keeper, freak. Would a brother go looking for trouble and put your career and your livelihood at risk by getting into fights at nightclubs and seedy after-hour joints and then scream to the media, yeah, it's all good, I'm an F.O.F., friendo freak. It's all misunderstanding. Y'all be haters, don't hate my game. I don't think a brother would do that to someone they really cared about, but a guy who looked at you like a meal ticket would. No. So you don't understand Vic? Really? I don't understand. No. Look, man, it was a misunderstanding with the guy in the next VIP booth. His honey started flirting with me. So naturally, I started flirting back. Next thing I know, Captain Cornball's off my grill piece. Beefing next to he know. <laughs> he got a two-piece and a biscuit on his left eye. <laughs> hey, nah, nah, I, I don't know where them. And he damn sure wasn't me. <laughs> hey, Captain Cornball's mad because I'm an F-O-F, friend of freak. <laughs> hey, well, check this out, though. We need to train that hottie before we leave the house, though. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> he's... He's hot as ain't loyal, man. <laughs> What's there to understand? Are you freaking blind? You know, I just want to know, how much did you pay your lawyers to make all this go away? Almost 100000 Excuse me, son, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I said I paid almost $100,000. Exactly. And if you keep riding shotgun with Vic, you're going to go broke. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Look, Vic is my friend, and I grew up with him. How many times I gotta tell you, sir? Freak, this is not a request. I am not asking you to do this. I am telling you to do this. And the first order of business is that Mr. Vic Van Leer is banned from traveling with you on the road. Vic is banned from the locker room. And Vic is banned from this arena. And if I catch this guy, Vic, in or anywhere near the facilities, Mr. Vic Van Leer will be arrested for trespassing. Are you serious, sir? Brother. 
I'm as serious as cancer. We all know that can be deadly. You know, when me and Vic were kids, playing summer tournaments at the Dome, we always imagined making it to the pros. And after the crowds left, just a street light was on the court, like 11.30, 12 midnight, even one in the morning sometimes. <laughs> we used to practice player introductions, running on the court, giving dab, high-fiving the teammates. Vic, he would act as an announcer. You know, he would introduce me, announce my name on the loudspeaker, and the jumbotron would uh, flash my image like a little guy dressed in long shorts and a jersey. And now, fresh off his three-game, 62-point scoring streak, the youngest player to ever do so in NBA history, frequency vibrations. <sighs> So me and Vic would sit in those empty bleachers at the dome and dream like nobody's business. And now, and now I'm living a dream. For real. And in so many ways, Vic was part of that. Please, listen to me. I mean, I know this guy's your dude from way back. Look. Me and Vic go way back like the front seats of a 67 Cadillac. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's, we go way back. Did you say, did you say front seats? Fr front seats of a 67 Cadillac. We go way back like the front seats of a 67 Cadillac. Well, do you have any crickets? <laughs> I'm going to be the hit once again at Herbie Island, Sun Valley Shindig, because my fellow billionaires love it when I walk and talk that talk. So that <laughs> almost sounds... No, let me tell you exactly what it sounds like. I respect, admire, and most importantly, love you as a human being and a role model. But I pay you a lot. And I mean, I pay you a lot of money to play for my team. And I am in this game to win it. And you can't win it with an albatross around your neck like Vic. So Vic is done. History. And here's some more lingo that I picked up from a former megastar who used to play for me several seasons ago. Thought I would never release him until I did. And now he's the sixth man on a struggling team in Venice. And yeah, I'm talking Venice with the canals and the gondolas and Harry's Bar, not the street ballers next to the fortune tellers on the beach in Cali. This guy used to tell me when he thought there was a player destroying our team, don't be a hero, cut that zero. And that is what I am telling you about, Vic freak. Don't be a hero, cut that zero. The only thing Vic brings into your life is headache and unwanted and unnecessary negative attention. And it will begin to affect your mindset. And when it affects your mindset, it's going to affect your play. And when it affects your play, it's going to affect my team. And when it affects my team, it's going to affect my money. And if it affects my money, Google Translate will become your new freaking friend. I want a championship ring, freak, and I want you to help me get that ring. And banners after banners hanging from the rafters in this arena. So, freak, hear me clearly and hear me good. V, G, G, Vic, gotta go! Handle your business. And remember, that contract you signed contains a morality clause, a very important clause that revolves around your conduct on and off the court and how it can negatively impact my team. Now, I don't want you to have to learn Italian or Croatian as a second language. And hey, playing pro ball overseas, there's nothing wrong with that. But the arenas are nothing like this, nor will the money be the same. And on top of all of that, this 
is the U.S. of A. The greatest freaking country in the world. Ask yourself, is Vic worth all that? Think about it. Think long, think wrong. I'll tell you about Vic. He, he has his bad rap. It's not, and I understand some of his judgments might shadow his actual character. He's not that at all. Man, Vic, let me tell you something. We actually, like, we have love for each other. We're brothers. Blood couldn't make us any closer at all. I mean, he, he has so much um, loyalty to me and to my family. You can see even Cece, you know, has uh, issues with him, but he's, he still loves her. He still loves her. The only color I care about is green money now you've certainly made some money so far freak but it's time we make more money i'm talking movies tvs endorsements even your own brand jordan sneakers i care about the game first dom all that sounds great but don't you think it's a little too early to be talking about all that too early lebron was 12 years old in sixth grade when he was thinking space jam it's never too early to take and make leaps i guess you guess this isn't high school this isn't college this is the real world and the real world is fueled by one thing. Oh, money. That's right. Money. Dollar bills, y'all. Why do you think they put presidents on them? Because that's what presides over us. I ever tell you guys about the first dollar I ever made? No, Don, but you're about to. Yo, check this out. CC, it's a great story, right? So I'm seven years old, Queens, New York, 1973. My older brother Lonzo, he's got a lemonade stand. So that summer, I'm like, Lonzo, you know, let me help out. Let me make a couple of bucks with you. He's like, all right, Dom, come on. I'll teach you the business. So I'm pouring tons of sugar. I'm squeezing the lemons. I got the lemonade stand all set up. I'm like, yo, I got this, right? So I'm watching during the course of the day. I'm noticing something Lonzo's doing. He's not charging for refills. That summer, I convinced Lonzo, no more free refills, and we make $2,000 plus tips. Today, Lonzo's Lemonade is a national brand and publicly traded. Oh, wow. That's dope. I'm not here to impress. I'm here to improve and to assist. I'm like the Italian-American Magic Johnson, running point for Team Freak. No, 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 no. <laughs> the only person running point around here will be me. CC. <laughs> Look at my watch, what do you see? Not this again, I've seen the movie. This is diamonds and platinum. Gold, forget about it. Silver, forget about it. This is diamonds and platinum. It's power and speed, freak, this is what you have. You are on your way to being the biggest thing in the NBA. I'm proposing now that we dominate off the court as well as on. I can't believe I'm saying this, freak, but Dom has a point. You've been establishing yourself on the court and now it's time to take it off the court. Brand Jordan sneakers, I mean, the possibilities are endless. Listen, Freak, you're gonna have to decide the legacy you wanna leave. But I'm not some agent from the Yellow Pages. I'm Dom Pagnotti. I'm the man, the myth, the legend, the king, number one. I'm the best, and I'm a shark. And the Pagnotti shark is working for you. Now, we gotta set new goals and bigger goals, okay? I'm talking all-star game. I'm talking dunk contest. When was the last time you saw an NBA great in a dunk contest, huh? I'm talking first team all NBA, first team all defensive team. What about social media? Yvette, great idea, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, let's kick it up a notch, www.freakinginviving.com. That's right, your own website, I've already set it up for you and it's running great. Wait, hold okay? up. Listen, I'm in negotiations right now on a feature that will allow viewers to watch Freak and only him and his plays during the game. Yeah, but you set up a website without consulting me? Yeah. When did this happen? Last week. Uh-oh, oh, this is gonna be epic. CC. I love you, but I got no time to waste, and you're out there busy doing whatever it is you're doing. Whatever I'm doing? You know what? I'm really sick and tired of the disrespect. This is Team Freak, not the Dom Pagnotti I Italian American Opera. Cece, calm down, all right? Dom here, he's just trying to take us to the next level. Look, Ming Ching, I don't even know why you're here when your job is to look good and shut up. Cece, chill. No, I'm done chilling. Between your clown agent and your gold digging girlfriend, I've had enough. Gold digger? You're the winner of the Lucky Sperm Contest, and I'll have you know I am currently starting my own fashion line. I've already got model contracts from Beijing to Milan, not to mention I graduated top of my class. Summa cum laude. You mean thank you, laude? I don't need a man to save me or provide for me, okay? I got my own, boo. Mm, okay, well, if that's the case, then why has all your success and fame coincided with your relationship with my brother? I mean, if you're really on top of your game, wouldn't that have happened before y'all even met? Right? You know what, Cece? You're just jealous. It's okay, though. Why don't you just play the background, yeah? Enjoy the ride. Y'all both done yet? May I continue? 
Now listen, as far as movie properties go, I've already got a script based upon a story of your life, Freak, okay? So guys, check out these possible titles. Freaking and Vibin', Life and Times, Volume 1. The Freak Chronicle, Freak the Fast and Furious, Part 1 does it, and this one's my favorite Freak, you're gonna love this. He got Pagnotti. <laughs> Whoa, okay. You love right, it, right? Dom, 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 Dom. Yeah, but look, you're the man, but you're not the man. Okay, you work for me. You have to follow my lead. I'm all for your ideas, but in due time. As for now, I want to focus on the court, and we'll discuss some of your ideas at a later date, understood? Yeah, we're cool in the gang, bro. That's all you had to say. All right, good. Thank you. Vet, chill. You cannot let Cece get underneath your skin, but on the same token, you cannot go out of your way to piss her off. I don't have time to be playing peacekeeper between you two. You know what? We need to talk about this afterwards alone. Fine. Cece? Cece? You need to hold this together. You and I both agreed long ago that Dom was the best agent for me. He has delivered. Oh, is Methus questionable? Is he a shark? Yes and yes, but he's our shark. He's what's best for me, which means he is what's best for all of us. Your job is to bring us balance. Manage the team, sis. We all need to be on the same page. You're right, but blood is thicker than water. You know, I ain't trying to hear all that. I'm not here to hold hands. I'm here to win games and achieve greatness on and off the court. But in order for that to happen, I need everybody, everybody to be on point. Essentially, get right or get going. Yeah, I don't have time to be teaching you guys how to work together. It either starts now or I find it elsewhere. Squashed? Squashed. Zucchini. Mr. Dom Pagnotti. Uh, the diamond and platinum himself. It's a love-hate relationship. What are you thinking about people who see your brother as just a meal ticket? <laughs> well, that's why I'm there. I'm the gatekeeper. Yep. I, I can smell it from a mile away. When you take time out for your own personal life, do you have a personal life? I do. Where at? I just... I think Freak is your personal life. You can think whatever you want, Mr. But, um, I have a personal life. Thanks. Yeah? Yeah. I think that should end the interview right now. Yeah? It's great meeting you. I told you. Don Pagnotti always delivers. Brand Jordan Freak prototypes. Open the box. Check Man. them out. <laughs> my Christmas and my birthday on the same day. Oh. Oh, Don. You love them? Uh, I love them. Hey, Ooh. they're waiting for your approval for production. Uh, approved. Approved? Uh, approved. Done. <laughs> I'll make the call. <laughs> in fact, not if we trust. I told oh, you, love them. Man. Hey, I'm going to have you playing in those 30 days or less. Oh, money. Oh, man. <laughs> Freaking and vibing. Hey. Freaking and vibing. <laughs> Freaking and vibing the knees, baby. As I was saying, you got a real big problem, all this kitty stuff, your evil twin CC and Dom got you doing a, uh, vet, what, what was that word he was using? Uh, rebrand? No, 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 um, recalibrate. All this stuff they got you doing to recalibrate your images cost you in the hood, fam. Yo, the streets is watching, and they're not convinced. Vic, how many times do I have to tell you? The streets ain't always right. No, 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 no. It's always good in the hood. Uh, let's not forget, I am a student of human nature. All right? Take mm -hmm. your man here. Mm -hmm. He's playing his hair video game as to not address the reason why his brand Jordan sneakers are sitting on store shelves collecting dust. Ooh. Ouch. Okay, what are your suggestions, Victor? He wants you to rob a bodega. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, man, I'm not talking about some focus group, all right? Mm. I'm talking about the hood. They don't trust you no more. They see you coming to the arenas wearing them tight pants your ballers be wearing, your high water ankles be showing. Your pants is just so tight, man. It, your ankles be choking. <laughs> Air it out some. People don't see themselves in you anymore. Look at me. People don't recognize themselves in who you are. Okay, you want to recalibrate? Fine, B, go ahead. But recalibrate back to Harlem. Remind these fools where you from. Represent, you know what I'm saying? Like, where's that Jesus piece you used to rock? Not that, that shuttle's worth. With them fake chains we used to wear. Yo, but that's my point. Yo, let me get you some nice jewels, huh? Make you flossy. Get you a new whip, something that the hood will love. Let's remind these fools that you the Harlem Renaissance up in this piece. Get a club, I don't know, something. Just, 
Throw your weight around, man. I mean, at least get me some, too. Yeah, and get some nice for that, too. Nah, but for real, in all seriousness, you think it's that bad? Yo. Cats be laughing at your corny commercials, B. Come on. But that's what I'm saying. Yo, we could change all that. Hey, now, I know CC's your manager and all, but everywhere she leads, you can't always follow. Now, I'm not trying to catch no charge, but CC got people out here laughing at you, fam. Now, so let me take care of everything. You're the CEO, I'm the CFO, Chief Lawson Officer. You hit me with that bread, and I got you. CC. How y'all doing? Uh, CC. Freak, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, what up? In private? CC, go ahead. Okay, well, I thought we were supposed to be having a private meeting today to discuss business. CC, what you think we're doing? Am I talking to you? <laughs> you know what? Y'all ain't talking business. Y'all talking nonsense. We were actually discussing the questionable nature of the promotional strategy that you and Dom have employed on Freak's behalf. Now, it doesn't necessarily resonate with his core fan base, primarily due to the fact that it negates the legitimacy of his personal background and history in favor of reaching a larger, primarily more disinterested demographic that would prefer to judge Freak's past as opposed to appreciate it. <laughs> Yo, what Yvette said, four times 25, 100. Oh, so now you know your times tables. Yvette, occasionally proving that you're articulate doesn't mean you have business acumen. Beyond, of course, your clear mastery of basic arithmetic, we all know you can add up how much Freak makes. Okay, Cece, that's enough. <laughs> no, no, you know what, Cece? You're absolutely Anywho, right. Freak, and reason... speaking of basic arithmetic, how much of Freak's money do you take? Okay, I mean, what, did I I what? what did I just say about Team Freak? A manager? What did I just say about no. Team Freak? The only right. members of Good. Team Freak in here are me and you. Oh, you know what, Cece? This isn't the womb, okay? It's not just you and Freak. Speaking of, how's that going for you? Hey, come on. Oh, snap! You gonna let hey. her talk to me Yo, like that, really? You need to check her I ain't even talking about her. Yeah. Yo, I'm out. You know what? I think I'm I'll out. join oh, you. No, 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 no. darlings, please. Please, have a seat. I would just love to hear what you all were just discussing. Better yet, let me guess. Hmm. Hey, yo, I'm saying, dude, what you need to do is hit up these parties. Yeah, you need to show these fools how you still have mad love for the hood. Get you some flossy jewels. Make sure every time they see you whistling the new whip. Better yet, let's get us a dealership or a club or something. Never mind that house you promised your twin sister you promised you get for your parents who are still in the projects where you left them. Yo, that's not fair. I ain't leaving my ass. Hey, and you know I'll never leave my parents a project. Thing, fam. I'll take care of everything. All you got to do is break me off with that bread. Yeah, that's what I thought. Wow. You know what, CC? I don't know what's going on with you tonight, but I think it's best you go home. We will continue our meeting here. You asking me to leave? Yes. Hey, right, yo, freak. It's all good, man. As a matter of fact, CC, I know you don't like me. You never have. Now, I don't know what I ever did to you. But at this point, does it really matter anymore? Look, I just want you to know that I'm really sorry. But whatever it was, I can honestly say it was not intentional. All right? Hey, Freak, think about what I said earlier, man. I ain't trying to catch no charge. Bet, you ready? Yes, ma'am. Stacy, you know I love you more than life itself. And how come you always put them before me? I don't put anyone above you, not even myself. You sure about that, Cece? What would you just call all this? I mean, you come in here blowing up my spot and you insult my brother? He's not our brother. You disrespect my woman. <laughs> He's trying to protect you. From who? From the likes of you? But you don't think I realize that I have vultures and blood-sucking leeches in my life? Don't think I realize that you're one of them? 
like something? Yeah, but you know what? That's what I think the problem is. It's because you realize you know better than them and you're ashamed. But in fact, you're worse because we share the same blood. And just because they don't have the same blood running through their veins as us, doesn't mean that they don't love me. Yeah, their love might be flawed, but it's true. What you need to understand is I don't need you to protect me anymore. I don't mind the people closest to me leeching off me. Yes, you do leech off me, and I leech off you too. You love business and you love me. I use that. Vic? Uh, Vic? You know you don't mind running these streets. He's my connection to things I don't want to deal with anymore, so I let him do him. I take care of him, and in return, he looks out for me in places you know you can't. And as much as you don't want to hear this, Yvette, she is the eye of the storm in my life right now. She is my only calm. She's my peace, my shelter. I use these people, and they use me. I just don't call it that, Cece. I don't call what you do using me. I call what you do caring for me. Forgive yourself and forgive them for using the resources at their disposal to get what they need. And what you need to learn to do is just trust me. Okay, I've always had a good judge of character, even before I was born. Remember? Because I chose to come in this world with you. That's right. It was me and you in the womb just kicking it. Right? Right? I was born first. <laughs> yeah, you were. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Swish. Some people say you just hang around, that you're a leech. Why is that the word? Because people just don't know. They yo. be hating? They be hating. They hating on my game. They hating on our friendship. See, F-O-F, friend of freak. See, nobody got that like I do. And everybody else wants that. Who doesn't? But that's my boy. I'm in that spot. That is my lane. And everybody else just got to make way for that, you know? That's him. But who are you? No, nah, man. I, just, I got my own life, you know? People think I'm just sitting back and riding on him. But that's not the case, yo. I got, I got dreams. I got dreams, yo. See, my, my boy knows. Like, there's, there's two ways that I could do this. I could do it a legit way, or I could do it the crooked way. And I'm really, really, really trying not to do it the crooked way, but Freak can help me do that. He could put, he could put you on? Maybe. You got to do what you got to do when you need to do it to mm. get ahead. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do, and I'm just really good at it. What can I say? I get by, day by day, step by step. Yo, Freak, what y'all say? What's up? What's up? <laughs> we see you. Yo, yo. You. What up? Basquiat, let's go. Got that R for y'all, that real spit. Uh, they call me Basquiat. The Harlem's in my pockets full of fat nuts. Making all the ladies drop. Paint me street corners green. My bank knows the color feels seen. Half man, half amazing. Hope you send me out the Demi Gog. Halo crown with the dollar sign. Got a pulpit. A ghetto saint to a grand design. Call me focus before the Basquiat. The streets is hopeless. I'm that Harlem's ain't painting pictures. Making new kind of skull. Hey, he goes by the name Basquiat, yo. Basquiat puts game down on them bars, yo. I'm telling you. Hey, we record a nice mixtape. Hey, do a nice video. Get some honeys up in there dancing. Hey, we could build a franchise around this, yo. Hey, I want us to do a deal, freak. What you mean by us, V? I mean us, as in you and me, me and you, putting some serious Skrilla behind this and put me on, man. I'm Basquiat. What? You heard me? I'm Basquiat. That's me. That's you? Yeah. 100. OK, you nice with it. What? <laughs> yeah. Wow, OK. Oh, thanks, man. Basquiat. Yo, 
We don't need no major label to make this happen, man. And in the end, we reap all the benefits. Think about it. What you thinking? Mm. I know it's we past Colonel Young Park too. <laughs> Yo, Coach Judy was the best. I remember when she took us from park to park so we could play ball. Uh, she taught us how to be comfortable in places other than the courts and the projects. Word, word. <laughs> Yo, Coach Judy would have us shoot hundreds of jumpers all <laughs> over the court with both hands. And hey, you caught on to the ambidextrous thing real <laughs> fast, though. Right. <laughs> now, but you were a beast with the hops. You were like 13. <laughs> Five six and could reverse dunk <laughs> with two hands. Right. Come on, man. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, used to bug all the older dudes out on the court. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, good crazy. times, man. Good times. What's wrong, Vic? It's nothing, man. It's it's silly, really. Come on, Vic. Fess up. I'm just I'm thinking about how fortunate you are. You know how how blessed you are. You know, you, you grew up with a mom's and a dad, both parents. Your family treated me like family when my dad died in Greenhaven in his ninth year on his 40-year bed. You remember that? Yeah. And I turn around, my mom's died from that flu. Like, that sick parting gift my dad left my mom's. No, I feel you, Vic. But it's all right, man. You know, your moms and pops are good people. You know, may they rest in power. So you're gonna patronize me now? Mm -hmm. You're gonna pity the little boy whose worthless, low-budget parents died from AIDS? Is that what you're gonna do? Yo, don't, don't pity me, all right? Don't play me, neither. As a matter of fact, go play the lottery, because, hey, you never know. Your chances might Yo, be better. Vic, 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 Vic. What are you doing right now? You got everything, don't you, freak? What do I have? Nothing. Man, I got nothing. You, you won't even, you won't even, your cheap butt won't even front me. The Skrilla I need to back a Basquiat mixtape, yo. And on top of that, I get banned from traveling with the team. I get banned from the locker rooms. I get banned from the arena. But why would you let them do this to your best friend, man? What kind of friend are you? Vic, you being serious right now. You're serious. <laughs> yeah, Yo, you sound like you on some Welch's sour grape right now, man. You jelly? I ain't jealous of you, freak. You sure, man? Because this, well, I don't know what you call this little tirade. It spreads like some Welch's grape jelly. Are you jealous? Like I said, I ain't jealous of you, freak. As a matter of fact, I think you are jealous of me. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah, that's right. I think you jealous of the way that I'm laying it down with these hottie hotties on Instagram while you stuck at home with your one blazing beauty. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, don't get heated because you went behind my back to get out of bed. And she turned you down, B. Hmm? Oh, whoa, whoa, what's wrong, Basquiat? Yeah, that's right. Look at you. Out there drowning in the middle of a whack lake without a lifesaver. Brother, real talk. Mm -hmm. You know how I get. All right, I was I was feeling a little friendly. I yeah. got a little loose with it. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, 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 you yo. know me, man. Save that riff for Heathcliff. Vet told me all about it. Kept it on the low, low. See if you ever was gonna mention it. You did it. You broke the code, B. One never steps to his boy's boo, even after they break up. But you broke the code. And you know you did. But you know what? It's still all love here. But it's you who chooses this life in these streets. You know, you wanna get on, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Tinder, trying to chase these thirsty tens. Yeah, use my name as a coupon. Reel them all in. Hey, sweet thing. Hey, sweetie pie. 
Hey, shawty, you know I'm a F-O-F, a friend, a freak. And then when they husbands and boyfriends start coming after you and you want to play the macho man role, start throwing hands, scrapping and fighting, who's the one that has to bail you out of jail? Huh? Who's the one that has to pay these lawyers in six-figure settlements, huh? Me! Not you. Oh, no, not you, Vic. And then, and then when you want to throw these lavish parties without consulting me, who's the one stuck with the bill, Vic, huh? Me! Not you! But me, I have hit you off in the past 10 months with a quarter of a million dollars, Vic. A quarter of a million dollars. That's a lot of money. I don't mind you eating, but when you're being a glutton and a glutton off my plate and my food, love is love, but I'm keeping it 10 times 10 with you right now, Vic. 100. As usual, 100. You right? You right, Freak. <laughs> You've been carrying me for a long time. And I've been a burden and a hindrance to you. And I'm sorry. I thank you for your generosity of finance. I thank you for your generosity of friendship. I thank you for your generosity of spirit. You know what? It's all good, my brother. But you owe me. Oh, yeah, you owe me. Yeah, how you figure Big that? Big time. Uh-huh. How? How? Dirt, bike, Don. <laughs> Remember him? Dude who was robbing everybody in the towers? Vic, I thought we were never, ever going to talk about this. Oh, you thought wrong, homie. Ah, I remember it like it was yesterday. Remember when we were on the stairwell in the building? Remember that? We had just brought our sheepskin coach from Delancey Street, a senior year of high school. You were the hottest prospect in the country. <laughs> and, and Donnie's jealous butt, man, he had it out for you and me. But more so you, Freak. More so you. <laughs> Remember when he saw our brand new fresh sheepskin coats? Oh, dude lost his mind. He ran up on you and told you to run it. Man. Oh, man, he wanted your coat. Yo, no, nah, Vic. Oh, he wanted Vic, it so Vic, bad. No, we were fighting, all right? We were fighting. OK, then he reached in this coat. And when he pulled, yeah. we struggled, man. Yeah. And it, when he pulled back, he fell down stairway by himself right, and right, cracked his right. head in two. Oh, man, hey, calm down, down, calm down, calm down. Yo, it's all good. It's all good, fam. I was there. Remember that? I was there. I saw the whole thing. <laughs> It's like you said, everything happened so fast. You know, you, you was working off of adrenaline and pure instinct. I know you didn't try and do it. Yeah, I know you didn't try and do it, man. Yeah. Anyway, I took care of all the loose ends when you ran down the flight of steps. Left me holding the bag. So your secret is safe for me, Freak. Has been and always will be. Safe from that same morality clause that you threw in my face when I was banned from your NBA life. <laughs> so next time you want to talk about food, remember. When Dirt Bike Donnie looked at you like food, who was it that saved the day? Me! It was me! Victor Van Leer, who cleaned your dirty plate for you! You're a clean freak. You clean it in the board of health. Cause of who? Cause of me! You got all this because of me! And don't you ever forget that! Something so funny. You're gonna get kicked out of this. You're gonna get kicked out of this. Yo, 
I need you to ask you for one more favor. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious, bruh. That's hilarious. Hey, hey, it might be the last favor I ever ask of you, but you gotta admit that's for you. <laughs> yeah, of course. Anything for FOF. <laughs> oh, hey, says the NBA megastar, his voice dripping with the sarcasm. <laughs> Hey, yo, peep this. Let me borrow this here ride, man. <laughs> hey, come on, come on. It's not like you're gonna miss it. It's just gonna sit in your Tribeca garage next to your Aston Mine and your Lambo, mm. and we both know they're collecting dust. <laughs> yo, how many whips you got anyway? Man, come on. Yeah, you're right. I don't even wanna know. Yo, this ride is for sure an aphrodisiac for all the hottie hots. <laughs> man, we live in a life, man. My main man, Frequency Vibrations. We for sure living the dream. I need this back at the end of the season in the same condition. Repeat, same condition. Same condition. That I lent it to you. Mm -hmm. Pristine, Vic. I know, I know what that word means. <laughs> hey. I won't let you down, man. I'm gonna treat this ride like one of my own hottie hots. No. No? No, you not. Not in this car, you not. No. <laughs> All right, man. I won't let you down, okay? I will change my ways, I promise. Yo, you hungry? I'm hungry, man. Let's go get something to eat, man. Let's, let's, get, let's, let's get some grub. Huh? What do you say? What do you say? Wow. Freak, I didn't expect you to be here. Coach should I practice out early? Hmm. You okay? What's going on? Same old, same old. Hmm. Wow, your shoulders are really tight. Are they stressing you out again? Yeah. Well, you know you always got me, right? <laughs> I'm always gonna be here. Baby, I'm your ride or die. And as quiet as it's kept, you and I are the real team freak. <laughs> of course. What are my moms? I never had this feeling with any other woman in my life. And she gave me a different feeling, which was something I fell in love with. I never asked her to be my girlfriend. It just became that. You could tell when we started falling, like, I get a text message, and she's like, <laughs> who's that? And it's just like, oh, so we worried now. Oh, so no more of that? All right, you know what I mean? So that's how, that's how I came to agreement. What's different about you that? Well, when you could teach me something or give me knowledge about anything, I'm already attracted to you as a person. I love learning, and she was very intellectual, and she's a very strong woman. And in this life, I need a strong woman. Yeah, send him in. Cece. Hey, how are you? Good to see you again. My pleasure. Freak. Great game last night. That's what I do, right? <laughs> Indeed, have a seat. Pagnotti. How you doing? Thought you'd be selling used cars by now. Funny, comedian. I thought you would have invested in some new clothes, being a team owner and all. I see you still rocking that goodwill look. Freak, what are you hanging around with this guy for? You know he's bad company, right? Got no choice. He helps me pay the bills. Plus, our mother loves him. Thank you all for coming by on such short notice. You're welcome. So you know why we're here, right? Not really. You want to negotiate an extension for Freak, right? Well, since you mentioned it, 
Your client is quickly becoming a liability for this organization. We've already put a plan in place that's finish, going to address Dom, all your concerns please, and issues. Let me finish. Thank you. Myself, the front office, and the coaches are not satisfied with the adjustments you've made in your life off the court. I personally warned you about the company you keep and were fed up with the late nights and showing up late to shoot arounds and the bad press and the incident at the nightclub. I told you Vic was going to be your downfall, and I was right. Something has to change now, or we're not going to need your services any longer. If this is about that Twitter stuff, Vic was playing. Okay, it was a joke. It's not about that. It's everything. But like I told you before, Vic is my best friend. I can't just cut him off. He's practically family. Not really. What exactly are you trying to say? I'm not trying to say anything, Dom. I'm saying it. Freak and his friend Vic are a problem for me and this organization. And I called you in here to figure out how we all together can fix this problem. And right now, I'm only seeing one solution. I agree that Freak may need to make some adjustments in his personal life off the court, but that's a learning process. We both know that. But this, this almost sounds like a threat. And Dom Pagnotti doesn't take too kindly to threats. Is this a threat? Call it what you will. We all know that Vic is a problem. The only person who doesn't seem to realize that is my brother. I'm sorry, bro, but enough is enough. I don't have a problem with what you're saying. I have a problem with how you're saying it. Now, I know we can come to some understanding without all the ultimatums or threats. Can we all come to a understanding, a compromise? No, no more compromises. I already warned Freak. I told you, don't be a hero. Cut that zero. It's cut Vic loose or we trade Freak. It's that simple. Fine, we'll go sign with another team. Good luck with that, Pagnotti. Because of Vic, Freak's reputation precedes him. No, because of Freak's God-given talent, his reputation precedes him. Everybody's been talking. Dom, you know how this works. This is not about you and me and our history. This is about your client. Help him. You're talking as if I'm invisible. You're talking around me, about me, but not to me. Vic has always had my back. And I've given this team everything I got. I practice hard. I play hard. Yeah, some nights I got it, some nights I don't. Some days I might even show up a little late to shoot arounds. But every time I'm on that car, I've always given my best. And I see how it is, though. I mean, us players gotta be loyal to you, but you don't have to be loyal to us players. Try to give me some father and son talk, talking about how you love your players and how you look up for them. Come on, man. You trying to cut me off like you cut off Izzy. Don't you have people loyal to you no matter what? People you can't cut off? Well, that's me and Vic. Vic and me. Y'all insist, really. But they could tell me stop hanging with Vic. What makes you think they won't tell me stop talking to you? Now, you remember in seventh grade, some guys were trying to jump me over some girl. Vic was the one to get some friends just to walk me home. And when they came, we went at it, but I wasn't alone. When I got my scholarship, it was Vic who put the word on the streets that nobody should mess with me because I had a future. Vic was protecting me. And sir, uh, I know, I know Vic is crazy. But before all the hype and the lights, media, fans, it was just me and Vic. He's always been there. I mean, if y'all don't like that, I don't know what to say. It hurts me to say this, but I see his point. What you don't understand is that the league doesn't have your back anymore. Not like they used to. They try, but it's too much. Social media has changed everything. And this last incident with Vic, that was the final straw. It was a joke. It wasn't funny. You know it wasn't a joke. Vic was defending you, stepping in to protect your honor by attacking another teammate like that? Talking about his manhood, his wife, his kids, his family, so you can be the big dog on the court? some call for and they all know your relationship with vic so they think it's coming from you but that's the media blowing everything out of proportion as usual it's not just the media he's attacking other players other teams he's out of control vic just doesn't know how to behave we got guys on our squad who don't want to be here because of that beef there is no place for that kind of inappropriate behavior in this league if you can't trust your teammates who can you trust what vic is doing isn't right he's bringing you down and people can see it I see how all the other players are looking at you. 
Oh, it's not cool. It's not cool at all. What, don't talk to him? Don't hang with him? You do what you gotta do, that's your call. But let me tell you this. You asked me if I had friends that I couldn't cut off? Yeah, I did for a while. Friends, business partners, girlfriends, wives, family that I thought I couldn't cut off. But I learned that sometimes you gotta make the hard decisions. I mean, some of these people, they were just bad for me. They were bringing me down. They weren't making me better. They were good for the time that they were there. But I grew up, not in age and maturity, but in mind and spirit. I was ready for the next level in my life. And I'll be honest with you, I've been on the receiving end of that. I've been cut off before myself. And yeah, it hurt at the time. But looking back, they were doing the right thing for me. Just don't tell my ex-wife that, Pagnotti. So what's the next move? The next move is freaks. It always has been. Question is, is he ready and willing to do what needs to be done? This is messed up. You take a moment to think about it, but think long, think wrong. The snafu should have been cleaned up a long time ago. With or without you, we got games to win. Freak, you gotta handle your business. Okay, we've all said our piece. You might cut me off as your manager, but I will always be your sister. So when this is on you, I might not like it, but I will respect any decision you make. I know money isn't everything to you, freak. And I find it hard to say this, but I've grown to respect that in you. You're a man of conviction. But it's my responsibility to point out the consequences of that way of thinking. Now, for you, winning is everything. But winning isn't something you could do alone. It requires excellent or, at the very least, competent coaching, contributing teammates, and God-willing good health. And we all know that's not a guarantee. Now, the reality is you're not in control of any of those other factors. But if you, as the star player, fail to win and deliver a championship, you will be held responsible. You will be scapegoated, you will be villainized, and you will be punished accordingly. So when you say to me that as a free agent, all you care about is being in the best position to win, I understand what you mean. But again, that's not only up to you. Now, I'm gonna call my guy at Apollo Jets. I'm gonna get us a private plane for this tour. I promise you, you're gonna love the free agency experience. Now, your relationship with Vic has unfortunately cost us in some of these negotiations. We had 10 teams interested, we now only have three. But thankfully, thankfully, you wised up when it came to Vic. Have you been in contact with Vic? Yo, freak, look at me. He still has one of my cars, Dom. What did I tell you about the L word? The L word? What is that? Loyalty. Uh. I don't know what kind of hold this Vic has over you, but it makes me scared. You're a free agent for the first time in your career, and the only person you need to be loyal to is you. You need to be an FOF. You need to be a friend of Freak. Let's forget about winning without appropriate compensation and loyalty that hasn't been earned and isn't deserved. This is a tough business, Freak. We need to be tougher. Come on. Cece? Woo, Lord Jesus, I was about to blow a gasket. <sighs> okay, freak. Now, our, there are our very few options on the table, and I want you to explore them all before making your final decision. Whatever you decide, it needs to be an informed decision, not an emotional one. The larger the markets, the greater resources at your disposal and exposure for you. But if you don't allocate these resources properly, then it's just a big spotlight on you as you lose. Well, thank you kindly, big sis. She's right, Freak. Thanks, Doc. Absolutely. Team Freak. That's what we're about. Oh, whoa, I don't know if I like this. What? Dom and CC high-fiving like that? I mean, yeah, why you got so certain I'm gonna lose? Whoa, whoa, whoa. No one thinks you're going to lose, Freak. You guys sure sound like it. We just want you to select a franchise that has great coaching, super talent, exposure, but most importantly, a ton of cap space. If the team doesn't win and you're to blame, at least you won't be broke, capiche? Capiche. Also, you should make sure it's somewhere you want to raise a family, but no pressure. Mm. <laughs> you guys have made this decision so much easier. What did mom and dad say? You know what they said. I mean, but honestly, I'm torn. I've heard and listened to what you've all had to say. Don't take this the wrong way. There's just one person I haven't heard from, and that's Vic. Oh, Lord, help us. Yo, Vic, where you at? I've been trying to call you, man. Hit me back. Mm. 
You know him. He's probably somewhere too loud to hear his phone. I don't know. I think Vic's actually upset with me. Yvette, please. Cece, Yvette. Where's Dom? I had him call you. Why? I'm gonna cut right to the chase. My brother is deeply in love with you. And I'm ready to put our differences aside if you are. Really? On a string. I'm, I'm with it. Team Freak. Team Freak. All right, so if you're gonna be down with the team, I gotta show you the dap. Oh, the dap. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so good. Oh. One, two, three, three shoot, two, swish. Swish. Yeah. Again. Wait. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> One, two, three, swish. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like that. Oh, that's. Yeah. <laughs> to thank everyone for coming here today. I especially like to thank God, my Lord and Savior, my family, my agent, Mr. Don Pagnotti, my twin sister and manager, Cece, my lady. Thank you guys for all your support. I'd also like to thank all the fans um, and all the people out there who consider themselves an FOF, friend of free. My free agency has been nothing short of amazing. And frankly, it has been a dream come true. But like most dreams, the reality is very different from what I imagined. Though I wouldn't change a thing about this period and the time I spent in the NBA, I can honestly say that nothing has been more gratifying and more difficult than choosing where to play next year. I sought the wise counsel of my loved ones. Nothing puts me at ease more than knowing that regardless of my decision, you guys will be there for me no matter what. Now, there are so many wonderful teams in the league, each field with stellar talent and all vying to be number one. For me, there's nothing more important than winning and surrounding myself with those who feel just as passionately about the game as I do and have an unrelenting desire to win a championship ring. That's what matters most to me. It is for this reason, above all, that I have decided to choose the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Yeah, baby! Good choice. The talent they have on that team, they go win a championship this year. You think so? <laughs> you know what that means. I'm gonna get Cha ching. <laughs> I love it. I know. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> That's my man. All right. All right, son. Congratulations. <laughs> Three letters M A X A. And Dom we trust, baby. And Dom we trust. Let me see this contract. Let me see this contract. I gotta call. I'll be right back. I gotta call. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, fool, where you been? I've been trying to call you. Mr. Freak. Yo, who's this? This is Officer Vasquez with the 9th Precinct. Officer Vasquez? What did Vic do now? Mr. Freak, there's been an accident. Look, we're gonna need you to come down to the following address as soon as possible. What kind of accident? Put Vic on the phone. I can't do that, sir. No, no, no. You're not hearing me. I want to talk to Vic. Look, sir, we need you to calm down as soon as you can. No, no, no. Hey, hey, What's listen, listen, on? listen, listen, Hello, listen. Freak. Put down the phone, and I don't want to hear it get picked up until Victor Van Leer is on the give phone. Me the phone. Put Vic on the phone. Mr. Freak, Mr. Van Leer was killed in a car accident. What's going on? Give me the phone. The car he no. was driving was registered to you. We were able no. to identify him from the flyer. Listen to me. The session. Freak, I don't want to talk to you no more. Freak, give me the phone. <sighs> hi, excuse me. Hi. Yes. This is Cece. This is Freak's manager. Who am I speaking with? Hi. Yes, look, we're going to need somebody to come down and identify Mr. Van Leer. Uh, eyewitnesses say that he was involved in a car chase. Two cars were chasing him, and as the chase escalated, he eventually lost control and crashed. Look, I'm, I'm really sorry for your loss. Hello. Outside of the deceased, was anybody else injured? <laughs> 
Vic died in a car accident. What? Yeah. They said he was in a car chase. Please, no. Freak, I'm sorry. To... He died. This all started here. Yep, right here in the dome. Yeah, and I was all about living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> I know it'd be some nightmares. As Daddy always says, all that glitters ain't gold. Yeah, I'm gonna miss my brother Vic, though. Deep down, he was a good person at heart, but he was never quite right. Something was always off with him, yeah. even when we were little growing up. Yeah, I know, I know, but I loved him anyway. I knew he was trying to take advantage of our friendship, but I didn't care. We were boys, ride or die, you know that? Ride or die. Just hope Vic finally found peace and death that he never found in life. Well, may he rest in power. <laughs> when you really sit down and think about it, life is about the length of a blink of an eye. And that's for sure quick. We spend a third sleeping in bed, a third trying to figure this thing called life out. <laughs> Yo, by the time we think you got it all figured out, you only got a third of your life left. Yeah, life's a trip. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Life's a trip. Ten times ten. Oh, honey. <laughs> hey, yo. Shout out to my man, Vic. <laughs> Shout out to Vic. <laughs> Come on, let's bounce. All right. Yeah, I'm about to wake up the project like I used you to. You better remember? not. <laughs> you better not. We ain't kids no more. CC? CC. Hey! Why are you sneaking up on us? Hey, we thought you two left town yesterday oh, after the funeral. Mm -hmm. We decided to stay one more day. Oh, I'm right. so glad you did. I wish we had known you were coming. We would have made you something to eat. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what y'all doing? Yeah, hey, chatting. Yeah, talking about yesterday's service. Oh, okay. How you holding up, son? You know what? I'm okay, pops. But you know what? We love you two so much. And it's only now that I'm realizing how much you two sacrificed for Cece and myself. Hey, because you know Vic didn't really get to know his father growing up. And we were lucky to grow up in a household with two loving parents. Uh, and you know what's sad to say? Like, people thought we had a highly unusual home in a project. Yeah, folks always talk about the negative effects of boys with no father in a home, but it affects girls too. And it's helped me in my relationships with men in my life. What men? Anywho, I know that all men are not dogs because I had a great father in the home. You, Daddy? I was there, too. He didn't do it alone now. <laughs> yes, right. Mama, of course. It <laughs> goes without course saying. Is. Thank you, daughter. I did what my father did, and his father, and his father before that. A man, a real man, will always be involved in his children's lives. I love your mother. We had our ups and downs. But I love her more than life itself. You two are a direct result of that true love. Yeah, we know that. Switching subjects. Yeah. I know the both of you like I know the back of my hand. You said you were leaving after the service. Why are you here out of the blue? Yeah, what's up? Why I gotta be all that? Yeah, we can't stop by and show our love and appreciation for right. our loving parents. I'm highly offended. I am appalled. Uh, what's happening? Yeah, come clean. <sighs> okay, okay. Me and Cece just want to give you a little present. Yeah, a small token, a small repayment for everything you've done for yeah, us. Yeah, all the sacrifices you've made. And we want nothing in return but your love mm -hmm. and grandchildren. Uh, but get married first. <laughs> yeah, save your money. But, Daddy, we really just But, want Daddy, to show nothing. You, you heard your father. Well, maybe, maybe one, one day. day. <laughs> maybe. But one day is not today. Nope. <laughs> okay. Well, for real, for real. We do have an actual flight to catch tonight. For real this time? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. for real this time. <laughs> well, it's so, good to see you again. Uh, love yes, love you, too. Hey, I'll call us when you get there, OK? Well, well, as soon as you yeah, land. Love you. OK, Mama. All right. Yeah, you all okay, call mama. us as soon as you get back. All right, as soon as you land. All right, yes, promise, promise. Take care of your brother. Of course, always. I got this. Don't trust. <laughs> hey, did you forget something? Uh, No, can you do me a favor and head to the sofa? The sofa? Well, what's at the sofa? Just look behind the cushion. Behind the cushion? Uh, Pete, come here. What they want now? What's in the envelope? Just look inside, Mama. Pete, you open it. Hey, we 
Wait, but see, what's this? Does it look like it opens doors? Keys to our house. Uh-huh. A new home? Uh-huh. Son, now I didn't told you and your sister a million times. Me and your mother mm -hmm. are very comfortable yes, right where we are. absolutely right. This is yeah. Harlem, USA. Project or no project, this is our apartment. This is the home we made for you to raise you up right in. We're not moving like everybody mm -hmm. else. Let me talk Tell to him. Tell him. Frequency, we both appreciate it very much. I mean, we, we're very uh, grateful. Uh, okay, can, look, there's something else in the envelope. He, he says, look inside the envelope. What? Well, look inside. Yeah. Eddie. Montego Bay, Jamaica. <gasps> Baby, pack your bags. We are living the dream. <laughs> oh. Thank y'all. Love you. All right. Love you guys. Love you. Be a freak. <laughs> By the time you read this letter, I'll be long gone. I wrote this letter because it's the only way I think my voice will ever be heard. This piece of yellow paper is the only way I'll ever get any of you to stop, listen, and really get to know me, Victor Van Leer. My childhood was turbulent, but even in the most unsettling times, there was a break in the tide. My father was the rocky water, and my mom's was the gentle surf. Pops did a lot of foolish stuff, but when he wasn't trashed and was actually taking the time to be a father, he'd say, Vic, you've got one life, a fragile life. God can take this life whenever he sees fit. So live and live plentifully. Each day God gives, live it in abundance. My pops was a smart dude, the most dangerous kind, educated and street smart. And this apple didn't fall too far from the tree. My mom's, yo, she was an angel. No matter how heavy the hand, she would do anything for me. And by chance, when I was casted into that darkness, she was the voice I followed back to the light. I was so young, too young. But my decaying flesh carries the scars and memories that won't fade. She's the reason I'm as loving as I was. She taught me to look at others as human beings and not objects. Now, where there's pain, a simple kiss, hug, or I love you, could disperse that rainy day. That's why I'll, that's why I'll never understand why. Why? Why she, of all people, was taken from me. The only one good thing I ever had in my life. And that was my mother. You ever feel lonely? Well, I didn't have any siblings. And no one would claim me as their own. It is the first time in my life I even... I question the point of living at all. If it wasn't for your family taking me in, I swear I was going to open my wrist or jump in front of the A train. But I found love. And I found it through my new family. Mr. P, man, he was the complete opposite of who my dad was. He was foreign to me. He was a good, honorable man, and to be honest, he intimidated me. I didn't believe I could ever be the man he tried teaching me to be. Miss Martha, damn. <laughs> Real talk, I was in love with that woman. Freak, if you're reading this right now, I'm sorry. I never met one hottie that came close to her. Mr. Peter's a lucky dude, but unlike my dad, he could recognize the angel in his presence. Aside from my own mom, she's the only other person I truly think understood me. I just wanted to be loved, yo. I just wanted to belong. CC, man, I've seen her make the hardest dudes break at the wrist. 
I've seen her turn coal into diamonds and then back into coal again, just by doing this intense stare she do. CC is no joke. I love her, though. We used to be close. And again, I'm sorry, freak, but when your sister get all mad and on one, damn, I just... Whew. CC, I love you more than you will ever know. I hope in my time past you can finally forgive me. Yvette is beautiful. A woman about success, work ethic, and never settling for less. Which, that's why I didn't stand a chance. Freak was king, and me, a big, fat zero. She was cool, though. Chill. And when she wasn't being all uptight, that girl was mad funny. I could see why you fell in love with her. She could make any man better. She was exactly what I wanted, and definitely what you needed. Frequency vibrations. My boy, my blood. I'm sorry I couldn't be as great as you. I'm sorry I was your weight and not your pedestal. I wanted to be a lot of things. I thought I was the next prodigy. Then you hit that court, and I knew. It was it. It was you, freak. It was you. I didn't have much of a life, at least not one I could be proud of. I never said this to you, but I wanted to be you. All I wanted was a taste, just a little taste of everything I never had. Can you blame me? Like my dad said, Life is short, and I just wanted to live it abundantly. I know it hurts, but your life would be better without me. There's nothing holding you down anymore, freak. I believe in you. And I always look out for you from above, B. Hey, bring that Jesus piece back for your boy, though. You know, that shuttle's working. I love you, freak. At least I did something right. At the end, I felt as though I had no place here anymore. I never felt as though I belonged. Maybe, maybe my greatness is in the heavens. Or maybe, just maybe, my greatness is you, freak. I just hope you and the fam remember me as I remember my mom. Look at people like human beings, not objects. Because if you wait, it's often too late. So just say you love them now, man. Be the voice they can follow out of darkness. Be to them what my mother was to me. An angel. Your boy, resting in power. Salutations, I am Sharonis Jackson, portraying the role of Frequency Vibrations, AKA Freak. I am from the Inland Empire, California, Philadelphia born, just showing love to everybody out there. That's a F-O-F. Hello world, it's your boy Wade Wilson, AKA Big Van Leer, Basquiat, an F-O-F, friend of Freak. Hey, I was born in Oakland, raised in Richmond, represent all day, love y'all.
What's up, world? My name is Michelle Michinor. I play Cece. I'm representing Jersey. Shout out to my people on the shore and in the city. I'm now residing in LA, living the dream. What's up, family? This is Gina Breedlove from Fort Greene, representing the Republic of Brooklyn, New York. I play Miss Martha. I wish you all so much love and peace. What's up, everybody? My name is Arthur Richardson. I play Mr. Pete. I'm a GI soldier. That's Gary, Indiana, for those that don't know. And remember, it's not just a game. What's up, y'all? My name is Anya Engel Adams, AKA Yvette Ming Ching. And I'm originally from upstate New York by way of South Florida, representing for all the independent ladies. And just let them know we got our own, boo. Mwah. Al Palagonia, born in Brooklyn, New York, raised in Queens, New York reprising the role of super sports agent Dom Pagnotti. That's right, the man, the myth, the legend, the king number one, the best. You see this watch? That's diamonds and platinum. Gold, forget about it. Silver, forget about it. That's like speed and power. And that's what I have. I'm the best, and I will represent you. Freaking and vibing, freaking and vibing, freaking and vibing. Go to K16, yeah, boy! Yo, hear me clearly and hear me good. I am Paul Garangelli from Petaluma, California, also known as P-Town, home of the Butter and Egg Parade and MoCap Madness, and I play the team owner. Hello, my name is Spike Lee. I hope you enjoyed our NBA 2K16 feature film Living the dream. Dolly, a little faster, a little faster. You know I'm on the dolly. This is my signature shop. We had a great, great time doing this. And as I said before, I've never done this before. It was a very, 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 very great learning experience for me. Worked with a great group of people in front of and behind the camera. And you know what? I want you to see everybody worked on this film. So crew, come on in. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. All right. Freaking a vibin'. Freaking a vibin'.